A polyp is a descriptive term, referring to a localized prominence of the mucosa into the lumen of hollow organ. It may be sessile or pedunculated. Sessile type resembles a hump-like prominence with a white base, while a pedunculated type has a thin neck with a white, club-shaped head. Small polyps are usually asymptomatic. Larger polyps may be the cause of bleeding or acute abdominal pain due to their torsion, or they may cause an intussusception. Very large polyps may lead to intussusception or obstruct the bowel lumen. If multiple polyps are present, a term polyposis is used. The term pseudopolyp describes an islet of normal mucosa, surrounded by depressed mucosal defects. Despite looking elevated, the polyp is in fact a residual intact mucosa. Polyps can be further classified according to their histological appearance, since the macroscopic appearance alone doesn't allow exact diagnostic assessment. There are two main groups of intestinal polyps – neoplastic and non-neoplastic. In this video, we will focus on non-neoplastic polyps. This group includes inflammatory, lymphoid, hyperplastic and hamartomatous polyps and also so-called inflammatory fibroid polyp or venex polyp. Hyperplastic polyps are described together with serrated adenomas in video referring to neoplastic intestinal polyps. Venex polyp is discussed in the video referring to a gastric polyps. An inflammatory polyp of the intestine is a result of repeated cycles of damage and subsequent reparation of mucosa during chronic inflammation, especially in inflammatory bowel diseases. Microscopically, it's formed by inflamed granulation tissue. The surface of the polyp usually lacks epithelial lining, but in some cases it may be partially re-epithelialized or show signs of organization of the granulation tissue. An inflammatory clochogenic polyp is a particular subtype of the inflammatory polyp. It progresses from so-called solitary rectal ulcer as a consequence of rectal mucosa prolapse during increased intraluminal pressure, usually in patients with chronic obstipation. On the histological level, it's formed by irregularly hyperplastic colonic mucosa that continues to squamous epithelium of the anal canal. A lymphoid polyp consists of the lymphatic follicle protruding to gut lumen. They are frequent especially in children, because they show a physiological hyperplasia of the intestinal lymphatic tissue, especially in terminal ileum. They can be found also in patients with subacute or chronic intestinal infections. However, a lymphoid polyp may be neoplastic as well, especially a mental cell lymphoma in case of intestinal localization may manifest in the form of multiple polypoid mucosal lesions. This condition is called lymphomatoid polyposis. Hemartomatous polyps were considered to be hemartomas, lesions of non-neoplastic developmental origin. In the present time, we assume that at least some of them may be neoplastic. They may appear sporadically or as a part of hemartomatous polyposis syndromes, with a risk of malignant transformation. The most common are juvenile polyps, poitz jaggers polyps and P10 hematogenous polyps. A juvenile polyp is the most common type. It's typical for pediatric age and may be sporadic or come as a part of juvenile polyposis. A sporadic one often appears in the rectum and represents a common source of rectal bleeding. It's usually a few centimeters large and its surface is smooth on the gross examination. Microscopically, it consists of cystically dilated crypts containing mucus or pus. 
That's why it used to be called a retention polyp. Stroma is edematous and markedly inflamed. The inflammatory infiltrate is mixed with the presence of lymphocytes, plasma cells, neutrophils and especially numerous eosinophils. The surface is usually ulcerated with the granulation tissue on the bottom of the ulceration. Dysplasia is rare in sporadic polyps, but more common in hereditary cases. A Poitz-Jaggers polyp usually comes as a part of Poitz-Jaggers syndrome. The sporadic occurrence is rare. It's usually multiple with predilection to a small bowel. The average size is a few centimeters with a smooth surface on the gross examination. On the histological level, it's formed by intestinal mucosa arranged into lobules. In contrast to juvenile polyp, Cystic dilation of the glands and stromal edema with the inflammation are not present. On the other hand, we can appreciate characteristic presence of smooth muscle bundles, branching from a muscularis mucosi, arborizing in a tree-like fashion and encircling the glands. Dysplasia is not typical in sporadic cases, but appears more frequently in hereditary polyps. P10 hematomatous polyps are the least common type. They can be found in several hereditary syndromes characterized by a phosphatase and tensin homolog gene mutation, as for example Cowden syndrome. Histologically, they are very similar to juvenile polyps.